Um, Mr. Speaker, but, but I cannot deny that he has engaged in a lot of extracurricular activities, which are on record. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if I proceed, can, Senator Orengo. Yes, M Mr. Speaker, let, let me just get to the point, and the point is this, and which has not been answered for, from many of the interventions. But the point that I want to make about Section 44, which is the one which has brought a lot of contention, is that, uh, Mr. Speaker. There are three words in those, in those particular provisions. And I think this is important because if you address it clearly and directly, it may uh, uh, let the country know what we are talking about. There are three words. The word notwithstanding, the word complementary, and the word commission. Under these provisions, the clause that we are talking about, the discretion to determine how somebody who cannot be identified electronically can be identified for purposes of voting, that discretion is not in the rules. It is given to the commission, because it says the commission shall put in place a complementary mechanism. It is the commission. It's not through regulations. And Mr. Speaker, if you remember, there was a time when DCs were given discretion to decide when they were returning officers, and there was a lot of messes in the election process. I know that in Transoya, for example, where uh, um, my friend, uh, the late Muliro, won an election, and then uh, a returning officer who was a DC told him that he actually he had the one who had lost, and therefore he was free to go to the High Court for purposes of determination. This is so important that we cannot leave it to the Commission. It is a matter that is so important that it is this Senate and the National Assembly that must decide how we elect leaders who uh, become either the speaker or become the leader of minority or, or the leader of minority. It is not a function that we can give to the commission. Yes. And if you give it to the commission also, yes. why are you giving the commission law-making powers? They, you are telling them to manage elections and also to make uh, rules about how they conduct those elections. If, if you are in court today, Senator Morkumen, a lot of judges are complaining that you are the ones who make the law. Now, if you fail to make the law definitive and predictable, who is going to uh, save you from laws that have lacunas and to give a lot of people discretion, which they should not be having? Mr. Speaker, because our time is short, I want to see this without contradiction. In this parliament, historically, is the laws that were made in this house that members of the parliament themselves have found suffering, tribulation, because we are passing laws quickly without thinking. I remember when Section 2A was being passed, I was the only person who rose in that parliament who we were brought back to the House in this kind of circumstances. And only President Moy and President Kibaki moved, seconded, and we were told no more debate. If you go to the record, I was the only one who spoke. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I want to say this. The person that you think is your neighbor will be your enemy tomorrow. I want to say this in this Senate. When I was in danger, it was this Senator Gigi Kariku who saved me. When somebody wanted to detain me. In fact, it was a minister who told me tomorrow you're going to be detained. It is Gigi Kariku who told me, don't take those words for fun. Run, you're going to be chewed. <laughs> now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we are not listening to each other. I beg you, let us listen to each other. This is one country, this is one Kenya. And I cannot understand circumstances in which the two joint houses of parliament pass a law which is agreed which is celebrated, and even the faith communities give a contribution. And then at the end of the day, after hardly 60 days, we say there was a mistake. Can you be trusted? Even if a marriage that you enter in a church, and after three months you say, we cannot live together. Something is wrong with you. You need, you need a doctor. And the person who brought this bill to us in this Senate 
that person needs a doctor, whoever it is. Yes. We can't be seen to be changing our minds like little, I don't know, they're, they're, even animals have memory, but it looks like we don't have memory of what we have done. Mr. Speaker, I plead that this bill, if you pass it the way it is, this house, we are calling ourselves the superior house, the superior chamber, and yet we are not even, we are not even prepared to change a comma from the National Assembly. You are, you are just becoming a conveyor belt. Yes. In fact, in fact, the president, President Uhuru, I, I can say that he's doing better than us. Some laws have gone to him and he has brought them back because he's, not a, he's, he's unhappy with what parliament has done. Nahapa Sisi, we, are, we don't see anything wrong. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, if you look at one of the provisions of this, if you look at this bill, part of the proposed amendments are amendments to laws that do not exist. Surely, what are we doing? And we have passed it. And the law is non-existent. We are dealt with. And then, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Article 99, uh, or rather, Article 95 of the Constitution, say that Parliament shall carry out its fun function in accordance with the, uh, with the Constitution. I am very happy with Mr. Sang. I'll forever call you my landed friend, not to your neighbor who is next to you, because you need to be candid. When Parliament is dealing with something which is clearly unconstitutional, we should say so. Yes. We should not let it pass. Yes. But if it passes, yes. even the courts are going to say, what was Wilkoman there, was Sang there, was Kilonzo there? Was the Secretary, uh, uh, Attorney General Emeritus, was he there? Was the speaker there, who is a, a legal student, was he there? So I urge you, I urge you, I urge you, I urge you that this bill is only for rejection. And in conclusion, I want to talk to my sister Nyaugenya. Honorable Beth Mugo, we have gone through the trenches with you. You know how, when governments are in power, how they behave. I think probably you can give people on the other side a little education. That sometimes revolutions eat their own children. Yes. Yeah. Government eats their own people. This government is going to punish you more than they will punish me. I'm telling you, in another one year, in another one year, you will be crying in my office to come and represent you. I know, I can tell you. I, I've appeared for President Kibaki when he was in the opposition about laws which were made here. I've appeared for President Uhuru and Vice President Ruto when Kanu was going away when Kibaki was taking away his members and making them ministers. I went to court on their behalf. But now that they're in power, they are forgetting. And power, when power gets into your head, I can tell you, you will never remember that one day there's a bigger power almighty that will deal with you.